Welcome to the first video of Bevy 0.16, where we are going to talk about Spawn specifically. Now, if you head on over to the docs for 0.16 on docs.rs and you type Spawn, you might be slightly confused as to which Spawn I'm talking about, as there are quite a few of them. Our starting point is going to be command Spawn, but if you see any of these Spawn commands, they all roughly correlate to the same thing. And if you go to command Spawn, and you start checking the source, you'll eventually end up seeing a lot of the APIs repeated. But commands is typically how you interact with the environment, so we're gonna start with commands.spawn. We also won't really be covering what gets returned from spawn, although that is an entity commands from which you can do a whole bunch of more stuff. So the function signature for spawn takes a bundle of some kind, and since bundle is a trait, this basically means a component or a tuple of multiple components, or something you've implemented bundle for. So when looking at commands.spawn, you can see this is inside of a tuple, and these are three components. So we've got the mesh 3D component, mesh material 3D component, and the transform component. This collection of components creates a single entity with three components on it. So I'm going to assume some familiarity with Bevy. We've got an app up here. We've got the default plugins. We've got a startup system or a setup function. We take the commands. We get meshes and materials because we're working in 3D. We spawn an entity that has the mesh and mesh material 3D, that is the cube mesh, as well as the material to apply to that cube mesh, which you can see here is just a color. So we're taking Sky 400 from the Tailwind palette, we're turning it into the color struct, and we're creating a standard material out of it and placing that in the center of the world. Then we've got a point light. So point light has another bunch of fields on it. Transform places that point light in the world. So we've effectively got three entities here this one has these three components, this one has these two components, and this one is our camera. So it has the camera 3D and the transform component. Now these components can pull in more components through a feature called required components. So we don't just have camera 3D and transform because if we check the source for camera 3D here, which has a number of fields on it, we can see that there are a number of required components, including camera, D-band dithering, a projection of some kind, what kind of tone mapping we're using and so on. So these are all getting inserted as well but we're mostly just going to ignore these for today because we're not talking about required components. We're only talking about this spawn logic. So we've got commands.spawn. It spawns an entity. It spawns entities with collections of components onto them. Wonderful. We've got a camera, a point light, and a cube. If we move to the second example here, we can see that this spawns three cubes and it does that through a slightly different command called spawn batch. So we've still got spawn for point light and camera 3D but now we're using spawn batch with an array of these bundles. And in this case, we are actually getting three different entities still. This is a batch of entities with these components attached. So this one has three components attached to it. This one has three and this one has three. So just to repeat, tuples implement bundle. Bundles are basically collections of components or components themselves. So spawn batch will give us multiple entities because this is an array and each of the elements in that array become an entity with some components on it. So the next question, this is the next example, number three, brings us to hierarchies. In this case, we've got this cube on the right hand side. It is a cube with two spheres. This probably looks like a face to you. It looks like a face to me. <laughs> I've called it little cube. So we've added a single system in the update schedule to move this cube back and forth. That system is not terribly complicated. It queries for the little cube it gets the transform component in a way that we can mutate, iterates over any of these queries that match. In this case, we only have the one little cube, but we could have many of them. And we are just changing the X position based on a sign of the elapsed seconds. So that's why it's moving back and forth. And we've got a single entity here. So spawn will let us use a new macro in 0 0.16 called children. So we get our little cube component. This is defined up here, it's just a marker struct or a marker component, or however you want to refer to it. So we've effectively labeled this entity with little cube. We've also included the mesh that is going to sit on this entity and the material that is going to apply to that mesh, the position in the world at which we want to spawn it originally, and then nested children. So this spawns more entities, but it does it in a specific way. This spawns the root entity, and this spawns child entities. So they are related to the root entity if you've seen relationships in 0 0.16, this is the new relationships functionality. And this is children as you've thought of it in previous bevy versions, if you have experience. So what we end up with here is a single root entity with two child entities. And we can roughly tell that these are actually child entities because 
if we look at the transforms, transforms are based on this root transform. And this root transform through that other system is actually moving back and forth. So we're not moving all of these transforms. We're only moving the root transform. If we go back and look at the logic here, we're, we're searching for transforms with the little cube marker. That is only the root. So we are only moving the root back and forth here. And that's how you can know visually that this is actually a hierarchy because these transforms work together in that hierarchy. This transform is moving. And here we've got slight offsets. So we've got negative 0.3 and positive 0.3. They're moved slightly up and slightly forward towards us. So they end up on the face of the cube, slightly split apart to look a little bit like eyes. But other than that, it's a bunch of stuff we've seen before. We're spawning the entity, we're spawning in a bunch of children. It's notable that children uses a square bracket here. There's another macro later that doesn't use the square bracket. So important to remember that. But other than that, these are still bundles and we've spawned sort of a hierarchy here uh, in 3D of a cube with two spheres as children. So I do mention that these are relationships. So if we go to Rust Analyzer and we expand this macro, it's important to realize that this macro is not magic. This macro is translated into very human writable, human readable code. In this case, we're looking for the children struct and using spawn. And then inside of that, we are using these spawn structs with the bundles that we saw. So spawn is basically a new type wrapper around a bundle and children spawn is what we call at the root to define what relationship we're dealing with. So this code is exactly the same. It's the next example, number four, but we've replaced the children macro with the children component. If we click into the children component, we can see that it is actually, we've got derived component on it. There's a bunch of other stuff. And then this contains a VEC of entities. Most notably, this implements the relationship. So if, you're, if you were used to parent and child in previous Bevy versions, this is now child of and children. This would be parent if you were, you know, say using Bevy 0 0.15 or earlier. So we end up with this children component that contains a VEC of entities. We say we're going to spawn a bunch of stuff. And the things that we spawn inside of this are going to be related to the root entity through that children relationship. And you can see this spawn is literally just a tuple struct that contains a bundle. We aren't really going to get into the implementation of spawn, the capital S struct today, but we will get into other variations of it that you can use. So this is the same code we just checked, the same as the children macro. If you're ever confused, just go to the children macro, expand the macro, and start reading the actual code that gets formed. So with this, let's start looking at deeper hierarchies, more stuff. And where do you have more stuff but in UI? So in this example, number five, we have basically the same setup as before. We've got a startup system, default plugins, so on and so forth. We've got no additional systems here. However, we are spawning a 2D camera now instead of 3D. So here we've got one spawn command, and you can see if I scroll down, it's quite long. We've got command spawn, we've got a node at the root. We've got some children of that node. We've got our first child entity, which is a button with a background of sky 700, some spacing, padding width, that kind of thing more children of that entity, which is the text. And if we wanted to, we could have more text spans in here. UI hierarchies tend to be deeper, in my experience, than game hierarchies sooner. So you can see here we've got a root, we've got a child, we've got a child of that child. And you can imagine how if there were more layout components, if there were more layout nodes, this would get even deeper and deeper. So these children macros can just nest arbitrarily. We've got our root entity, We've got the children of the root entity. We've got the children of the button. And we've chosen to do three buttons here. So this is quite a lot of code for basically a lot of repeating uh, logic, if you will. I guess it's not really logic. We're just defining <laughs> declaratively what is supposed to spawn here. So if we go to number six, one of the new features in 0 0.16 is the ability to return impl bundle from one of these functions. So we can clean up our original code. This is the same code we had before, except for the fact that we are using this new function with some text. So we still have three buttons. We see new game options and quit, but now we've got sort of a button widget that we've created here. This button widget happens to be maybe a little bit more complex in that it uses into string instead of just string, uh, but that's not really relevant. You can type string instead of T here if you want to. So this function returns this bundle tuple that we've been talking about. It's the button, it's the background color, it's the node, it's got the children, it's got the text that we want inside of it. 
So you can even build these widgets to pass in configurable options and then use those when you return the bundle. And then your UI code starts to get significantly smaller, uh, which is always good because UI code can be pretty verbose. So the obvious next question is we have a bunch of buttons and I would like to be able to click them. In this example, number seven, we can click them. And in the terminal down here, you can see them printing out every time we click them. So we've got the same setup here, the same root node, the same bunch of buttons, but we're using something new. We've expanded out to the children spawn again, instead of using the spawn macro. And we've used spawn with instead of spawn. What spawn with lets us do is take a reference to that parent node, which is technically a reference to a related spawner with a child of, <laughs> which is a little bit more of a mouthful. So I just kind of think of it as this root node and that we are going to spawn things that are children of the root node or that is a child of. So this entity is a child of the root node uh, and we get that by default. So we don't have to insert child of into everything. Anything we spawn using this parent variable here will get to be a child of this root node. So we again have our little buttons here, button in this case with name, and we want to observe that button. So without changing anything about this button that returned a bundle down here, we haven't modified any of it. We haven't done anything to it. We just want to be able to observe whenever you click it and do something. I've written this in a fairly verbose way. You could easily throw in like an on click function here instead or do whatever you want. But the core point here is that as of 0 0.16, observers don't implement relations. So we still need to use these like dot observe APIs. But we can do that very easily by whenever we want to spawn the children, we use spawn with instead of spawn as our wrapper. We get this function as a result. This function will get called. We can use that parent to spawn in our button. And then we can immediately turn around and apply our observer. In this case, it's a trigger pointer click. So anytime we click on these, we get that functionality. So instead of needing to do this outside of the scope of this set of children, we can do this right in line. And to kind of drive this point home, we've got another example here, number eight, we've got new options and quit as usual. And you can see those are still behaving appropriately. And then we've got this set of numbers down here that are all individually rendered. So we still have that children spawn. We're still using spawn with here, but remember that when we do this, we can supply as many as we want, right? So here we've got spawn with, Maybe you have collapsing in your editor, maybe you don't. So I can collapse that spawn with, and we can see that they are siblings. And we use spawn here to spawn a new node as a sibling of all of these buttons. And in that node, we use the defaults. Uh, you don't particularly need to write it like this. I think I was going to split them uh, using some justification, give them some space between themselves. So let's make that change. And instead of having that default there, I just expanded this to have a width and a justify space between. Uh, the width matches the buttons. This is arbitrary. This could be the container width or whatever. I just chose to use a hard coded value in this example. Then we've got space between, which separates all these out. And these are all individual items. So if we had a bunch of items that we needed to render as children of this node, we can use spawn iter. So we've got spawn, we've got spawn width, which again, gives us that closure that we can use to spawn those observers and whatnot, or do whatever else. And we've got spawn iter. In this case, we've got a simple zero to nine range. We do an into iter and we map those over into bundles. So this is a text bundle, or rather this is a text component <laughs> that also functions as a bundle. So in this case, we are spawning 10 pieces of text, nine pieces of text, sorry. <laughs> May not have counted correctly, nine pieces of text because I didn't do dot dot equals. So we have an iterator. We can give that iterator to spawn iter and that will spawn a bunch of children for us. Kind of a silly example, but I did want to make the point that there is spawn, which just gives you that entity with the components on it. There's spawn with, which gives you this closure that you can then do whatever you want inside of. And then there's spawn iter, which will take an iterator of bundles that you give it and spawn them all. So for our final trick, we'll do a combination of a number of things. This is the cube we saw earlier, exact same implementation alongside an inventory bar at the top here. So we've got app new, we've got update, moving the little cube back and forth. We covered that earlier. We've also got this update inventory display function, which we will cover later. We've got our little cube here and our little cube has two children eyes. And then we start to see this related thing here. This related thing is a different relationship. So similar to the way that we have children, we can also just have any arbitrary relationship inside of this spawning hierarchy. 
In this case, it's called inventory. And inventory, if we go back up, is defined up here. We've got inventory and its other component item of. Now today isn't talking about relationships, so I'm just gonna say this is a relationship and leave it at that. So when we go down and we start using the related macro instead of the children macro, so the children is a specialized version of related, note that we are using square brackets for children and parentheses for related. We pass our inventory component to related, which then takes an array of bundles. And in our case, these bundles are a name and an asset server image, so a handle to an image. This is a simple wrapper component. So display image here is just a handle to an image. So we are actually spawning in this little cube player, let's say, with the eyes that it's supposed to have in the locations that it's supposed to have them as children and an inventory that is related to it, but not spawned in the hierarchy. These entities are just related to our root entity, but are not necessarily children of that entity. Again, we haven't really covered relations. This isn't a relations video. All we're talking about here is the syntax of children with this macro is a specialized version of related. So you can do this with any entity or any relationship. And then we also do the same thing with the UI here. So we spawn a node and we have item slot here. Item slot takes a number zero, one or two and spawns a set of children. That is the same thing that we've seen before. The hierarchy is just a little bit deeper. So we take that index for item slot, we spawn a node, we spawn some children, we spawn a node, we spawn some children, we spawn a node, we spawn some children. And down at the bottom, we have this image node with an item index component. And this just keeps that index around. So the way that I'm doing the association between what's in this player's inventory and what's supposed to be displayed on screen is through this index. So zero, one, two, whatever. In this case, we're defining the locations in the UI that will associate with the locations in the inventory slots. So with just one spawn command here for our player and their inventory, and one spawn command here for all of our UI stuff, and then our camera 3D and point light, we end up with a player that can display its inventory on the screen. And since it's in here, I'll mention this update inventory display. This is kind of a random utility function. It's not super important. We query for that inventory component on little cube. We iterate over it to get the slot ID and the entity that's associated with each of those places. We do a get using that entity to get the actual data from another query. So in this case, every item is a name and a display image. So we've got an inventory of entities. We take those entities and get their actual items using this query. If the item displays this like inventory slot UI can find a matching slot that it's supposed to display, then we set that image to equal the handle to the display image. And thus we get the emoji that this player has in their inventory displaying in those UI slots. But again, this is very much about the spawning APIs. This is very much about children. This is very much about hierarchies. This is very much about the fact that children and related are basically the same thing. If we expand the related macro and I make this visible for you, you can see that this is inventory spawn instead of children spawn. It's the same code. So the two macros boil down to effectively the same thing, but for different relationships. And that's it. The things that I would leave you with are effectively use children when you can, when you can't, then start to look for the children spawn style approach. You can use spawn, spawn with, and spawn iter if you use this children spawn approach. Again, this spawn, spawn with, and spawn iter are not components and they're not bundles. So you can't use them if you're using this macro syntax, you can't put them here like this, this won't work. They are wrappers around bundles. So if you're going to use these extra functionalities, spawn with spawn iter, you do need to use the children spawn function instead of the children macro or the spawn function on your relationship of choice instead of the related macro. That's it for spawning hierarchies today in Bevy 0.16. The link to these examples will be in the comments or rather in the, <laughs> or rather in the description of the video. And I'll see you in the next one.